Hey everyone, welcome back. Before we get started on the stories, I need to just give a general warning for sexual assault throughout this whole video. If you're curious about the specific stories, check the timestamps. I'll have each story labeled in case you want to skip any of them. And if you have your own story that you'd like to share, be sure to send it over at southerncannibal.com. All that being said, if you're all ready, let's get started. And remember, to always stay hungry. For context, my name is Laura, and at the time I was in my teens and I had just broken up with my high school boyfriend. Everyone knows that high school relationships are somehow different from other relationships. After feeling sorry for myself, I ended up going on an old chatting site called MySpace, which if you teens never heard of it, look it up. Anyway, I came across a cute guy whose info said that he was a car dealer and newly single. I felt like it wouldn't hurt messaging him, and maybe at least find a friend. We'll call him Matt. A few weeks later, we had talked for a while, and then decided to meet. He picked me up in a decent car, and he said he just wanted to hang out and talk alone, preferably somewhere quiet. We went to the park, talked, and he seemed quite normal. The only issue was how overly dressed he was for just a park date. Plus, he had cologne that was overpowering. On the way home, he had started telling me about his ex. He said that she always decided to break things. I mean anything. Plates, TVs, mirrors, anything. He even started saying how it turned him on and how he loves breaking stuff. Okay, red flag. I decided to end this very nutty relationship. When I told him that we shouldn't talk anymore, I immediately heard a loud shattering sound over the phone. Then he told me to break something. Right then before I knew it, I then heard glass shattering in the background. I was stunned. This nut ended up yelling at me to join him on the breaking stuff. I immediately hung up and I felt like I just hung up with a psycho. So the next day I was at work and I got a message from a different name saying to look outside. There was Matt's car just sitting there, obviously staring at my office window. I thought for sure that I was going to need to call the police and get a restraining order. My mom, before I even went on a date with him, said that she got bad vibes from him. Well, it turns out she was right. Yeah, parents are sometimes right, I guess. About three weeks later, I got a call from my mom telling me to turn on the news. There was Matt being charged with robbing two pharmacies and stealing thousands of oxys. I really think maybe the addiction took over his brain, but I'm so glad I ended up breaking things off with him. Moral of the story, be careful of who you're talking to online. My name is Carissa, and when I was 21, I met my biggest mistake. His name was Eric, and we met on MySpace. Yeah, MySpace. We met and he showered me with short-term gifts, and being young, I fell hard. I grew up in a family who hardly ever showed me much attention. It was usually just all about my twin brothers. Anyways, Eric had showed me more attention than I'd ever known. As time went on though, he became more possessive, and it eventually came to where he didn't even trust me attending my own college classes, which mind you, I was always faithful. I ended up quitting school and cutting all relations with my family. He was the typical abuser. He ended up being more verbally abusive at first than physically. Unfortunately, we ended up on drugs and had our son taken. This is where it gets ugly. He basically made me start dancing at a strip club and see John's on the side. Then it got to the point where he said I owed him a threesome, even though I was just doing him a favor. I can literally remember him dragging us to nightclubs just to try and find a girl. The Johns I saw were mostly okay, except for one night when it was only supposed to be one guy but ended up being four. The rage in his eyes when I didn't bring home the money that we needed to get high. I could always expect a sucker punch right to the stomach. 
Why didn't I leave? I felt like I had no one else. One night he threw this crack party which I had zero idea about. As soon as I walked in, he had asked me how much money I had. It was sick. I was so naive, and like I said, I wanted the attention. As the night went on, I had saw him talking to these two girls, which I knew what was coming. But this time, it was just bluntly rude. We lived beside his brother, and he told me to go ask his wife for 20 bucks to borrow. Obviously for more drugs. I had to see what he was up to first. As I was leaving, I had peeked through the curtains and I saw those two girls giving him head. Yeah, right there in my own apartment. I ran back there in disbelief, showing my anger. Everyone seemed to scatter, which infuriated him even more. Remember, he thought if I was doing it, he could. I got so nauseous because I knew I was going to get the ultimate beat down. I ran to the trash and threw up. I then took off to the bathroom thinking I'd lock the door, but I didn't. Believe it or not, he came running in with that same bag of trash, pouring it all over me. I quickly turned on the shower, but not before I got another shower. Yeah, he urinated on me. I was eventually able to close the shower curtain, and he left. I cannot begin to tell you just how degraded I felt. For anyone to urinate on someone, it has to be the bottom of the bottom. The really messed up thing was that I still went to work that day and put on a happy face. Now thank God he's just a memory. Well, actually a nightmare. Girls, please, don't let any male or female degrade you like I was. You matter. You're somebody. My name is Jennifer, and the story takes place in 2004 when I was 16 years old. I want to give a trigger warning because it involves sexual assault. I can't exactly remember what month it was, but it was in 2004, but it had to be around a holiday or something of sorts because the whole extended family like my aunts and uncles were all at my parents' house. Despite whatever holiday was going on though, I happened to be up in my room on my computer decorating my MySpace. Yep, for those who remember MySpace. Anyways, I was minding my own business when my uncle, who's my stepmother's brother, came into my room and then sat down on my bed and started talking to me. I can't remember the full extent of the conversation. I'm sure some of it was about what I was doing, but the parts that I do remember disgusted me. Like I said, I can't remember how we got on the subject because it's been damn near 20 years by now. However, I remember he had made a remark to me about pouring chocolate on myself and then him licking it off. Me being in shock, I just kind of laughed it off. But in my head, I was kind of like, uh, what the fuck? Because why would he even say anything like that to me? Anyways, flash forward about a week or so. Back then, I used to smoke and drink a little like the rebellious teen that I was. So, my uncle had contacted me and said something about how he had some weed and some vodka, and if I'd like to come hang out or whatever to smoke and drink. Honestly, I wasn't even thinking about what he had said to me previously when I had agreed to meet him down the road for him to pick me up. I had met him down the street where he picked me up. And he then started driving to his house, which was a good 45 minute drive because he lived about two counties over. On the drive to his house, he had asked me to sit a little closer to him, which immediately threw up red flags in my head. Honestly, I didn't know what to do at this point because I was nervous and scared. I scooted over on the truck seat just to oblige him, even though I was nervous and in a panic. He then proceeds to put his hand on my leg and then keep it there the remainder of the ride to his house. So we get to his house and we go inside. He pours me a drink of the vodka he bought while I roll a blunt with the weed he bought. At first, everything was fine. We were joking and laughing, but then he goes and lays on his bed and he asks me to join him to watch TV with him. I go sit in a chair in his room and then he insists that I lay next to him on the bed. Honestly, like I said before, 
I didn't know what to do. He literally lived out in the middle of nowhere, and I knew that if I contacted my parents, I'd get in trouble, and I didn't know what my uncle was fully capable of either. So I proceeded to get on the bed and just do what he said. He asked me what I wanted to watch, and back then I probably just said MTV or something along those lines. He then looks at me and says, What about a porno? And I kind of just look at him in shock, and I was just like, Um, what? He then turns on one, and some very uncomfortable five minutes pass by, because at this point I'm just like, What the fuck did I just get myself into? He then proceeds to undress me, and get on top of me. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I think you all know what happened. I just laid there scared not knowing what to do while his sweat dripped onto my body while he did what he did. Finally, when it was over, I was just so disgusted at myself. I decided to take a shower to get the sweat and everything else off of me. He asked if he could join me, and I quickly said no, but that didn't stop him from physically washing me himself. After all this, I then begged him to bring me back home. I really felt so disgusted and ashamed of myself, even though I know it wasn't my fault. I blamed myself for years and years for what happened to me. Fortunately, that was the last and only time he ever did that to me. I do want to say, although I still haven't told anyone in my family, to this day karma has come and bit my uncle in the ass. He had a stroke roughly 10 or so years back, and he's been paralyzed from the waist down ever since. I hate to feel like a bitch, but a big part of me feels like he got what he deserved. I'm 29 years old, and I'm an autistic introvert, and I really hate being touched. When this happened, I was 20. I grew up in a small town in southwest Ohio. I had just gotten back from my uncle's house in Oklahoma. I have horror stories about him too. But anyway, I was on Meet Me way before it was MyYearbook.com, and that was also before Facebook, but after MySpace. Well, I was kind of lonely, so I just started surfing to see who would catch my eye. I got a message from this dude on the Meet Me app. We hit it off online. It had took me about a month before I actually decided to meet him. He messaged me one day and asked if we could meet. After I gave it a bit of thought, I agreed. My problem is that I neither had my license nor a car, so my only other option besides walking was riding my brother's bike. I went through my contacts and I even asked my dad. All of my attempts were met with a no, even though I had $10 on me for gas. So as I was on my way to his house, stupid I know, I was about halfway there when I got the shock of my life. I was riding on the side of the main road going through town. I hit a sewer drain, and somehow my front tire got lodged in the sewer grates and sent me flying over the handlebars. Luckily, there weren't any oncoming cars in my lane at the time, but the folks at the Frisch's big boy across the street and the passing drivers all got a good laugh from it. I, however, did not. Well, he turned out to be a jerk because he had a car but refused to drive me home. When I offered gas money, then suddenly his car had all these problems. Before I left, I had asked my friend to pick me up from his house when I called from his Wi-Fi. I was broke and I couldn't afford to pay for phone service. Keep this in mind. The story isn't about my ex. If interested, maybe I'll write more about it in another post. It was time to call my friend. I called once. No answer. Called again. No answer. I called a third time and she finally answered only to tell me that she was busy to wait an hour and then she'd get me. I waited the entire hour very uncomfortable because of his behavior towards me was going somewhere where I really didn't want it to go. As his behavior was starting to get more erratic and threatening, I then said, it's about time to head out soon because it's going to get dark. He begged me to stay. I called my friend again hoping she'd say she's on her way or that she'll be there soon, but the answer never came, so I just decided to start walking. I was devastated. 
I knew the walk was going to be a long and difficult one. I couldn't ride the bike. I decided that I'd have to leave my brother's bike behind. Well, about 13 miles into my walk home, I checked my phone to see what time it was. It was 7.30 p.m. It was about to start getting dark. This black Ford F-150 then stopped and asked me if I wanted a ride. He seemed nice, but I'm naive at times, and I often miss red flags even though they're smacking me right in the face. There's no other vehicles on the road at that time, so we sat there for a few minutes while I decided. When I finally decided to get into the truck, I had noticed a tire iron on the floorboard. This is important to this story. He was heavyset with short black hair, thin framed glasses, and a mustache. He wore a gray shirt and blue jeans and brown boots. He started with the typical questions like, So, what's your name? How old are you? Are you single? I replied matter-of-factly that I was just walking home from my then-boyfriend's house. We went about four and a half miles from the place where my family lived, and then he went on this rant. You know, women nowadays are too easy. They'll fuck just about anything with a dick. He then reached over and reached into my spaghetti strap shirt under my bra, then grabbed my breast and started rubbing it. I froze. He stopped and then he went into my sweatpants. At this point, I'm now trying to come up with a way to get the hell away from this man, but then I remembered the tire iron that was right by my feet. I asked if I could please have a cigarette. He said yes, so I set down my backpack between my legs and the floorboard just to make it look like I was looking for cigarettes. The backpack was slightly on top of the tire iron. I then grabbed it and said, If you don't stop the truck, I'll make us wreck. He still didn't stop driving. I was thoroughly pooping myself at this point. I swung my arm backwards and then busted his back window out and then screamed at him to stop the truck. He was screaming and cussing me out and calling me all sorts of colorful terms. He slammed on the brakes, and I then hopped out of the truck, running behind the truck to the left side on the road. Again, more stupidity on my part. Now, where we were stopped at was part of a national reserve that I happened to know quite well. You might be asking yourself, why did an OP run the other way? Well, on that side of the road was a bit of fenced-in land, and the gate was always locked. Anyway... I'm in the woods heading towards my family's house. I knew if I didn't get home soon, I was going to get lost in the dark woods. I was much bigger than I am now, and I was sweating heavily, so I needed a few breaks. My heart was pounding so hard, and it was really hard to catch my breath. I swore that every little noise was him about to grab me. I made it home in about an hour of trekking through the woods. I had told my family everything that happened, and they shrugged it off like normal. It made me feel very invalidated. My family has never been a source of comfort or safety. Just another reason why I don't trust anyone. When I calmed down and cooled off, I decided to go confront the so-called friend. I looked in the parking lot for her van. She was home. I had knocked on her door and confronted her, and she finally came clean. She said that she was home the whole time. I told her what happened and she didn't even care at all. I was really hurt and furious with everyone in my life at that point. I haven't talked to her since. To my so-called friend and that dirty old man, thank the gods I'll never meet either of you ever again. Hey everyone, that's about it for today's stories. If you have your own story that you would like to send, you can send it in at southerncannibal.com or you can email it at southerncannibalstories at gmail.com. I look forward to telling your story. Have a good night or good day, everyone. And remember, to always.